Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel, this is Hazel. In today's podcast, I have an amazing guest. She is a nine-figure copywriter, Amazon best-selling alpha. She is Arfa Serekbal, to talk about the psychology of a high performer and more specifically, the psychology of a buyer. And if you are a startup entrepreneur who is looking for free advices to get to your first 10k per month, I assume this is for you. I'm a six-figure coach and I have listened to this podcast over 10 times by myself. And every time I was like, wow, I've learned something new. So stay to the very end of this video. You will learn a lot of things. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hello again, Arfa. How are you doing? Thank you so much for taking your time and be here with me on this podcast. I know this is the second time we do this podcast. We record this podcast um, because we of some problems. We had the last one and we lost it. But we, here we are. We do it again. Thank you so much for taking your time again and be here with me. Oh, it's um, an absolute pleasure. We had we had such a blast last time. So it's a, yeah, it's a exactly. shame that the, the recording didn't sort of work out. But here again. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... Arfa, we are here to talk about an important topic and something that you are specialized in. You're the best one to talk about this with, and which is the psychology, like psychology of a high performer and more specifically a psychology of buyer, because lately you have wrote a book about this yeah. and you became, yeah, you, yeah. you became the, uh, you know, one of the like, most and best-selling author, right? Yeah. So that was amazing. I loved it. So tell me a little bit about you, Arfa. Tell us a little bit about you. When did you start all this? When did all this start? It actually started way back in 2010. Um, and basically what happened was is my marriage was on the rocks and I needed something to do. So I've got a corporate background. I spent uh, three years working in a school but I had two children and at the time my youngest was like 10 months old and I'm like oh my god like, what am I going to do like I can't go back into work because you know he's so little I don't want to put him in the nursery and you know I need to basically I need to make money from home and kind of like I went on this like search and this um you know, just trying to figure out like, what can I do that I can do from home and still take care of my children? And mm -hmm. my sister suggested like doing writing. She said, you've always been very good at it. So I got a couple of courses. I found some courses on the internet, took those courses and, you know, I tried really hard to get some like, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but I tried to get some um, clients and whatnot. I think my first ever gig was like paying me three pence per hundred words which is like peanuts, like, and I couldn't believe that I thought that that was okay to do. And my sister was like, what are you doing? Like, this is, you, you are not going to be able to make any kind of living like doing that. Anyway, at that time, I came across something called the Warrior Forum. And I ended up getting on there. And I came across this thing called copywriting. And I was like, wow, what is this? What it is copyright? I didn't even know what it was. It's like, I thought it was a thing that you do, you know, when you have a process and you want to copyright the process so no one else can steal it. That's what I thought it was. So I had no idea. And the more I read about it and I was like, this sounds like really fascinating. Yeah. Um, so I bought a couple of copywriting courses and, you know, I managed to get myself a couple of gigs on, um, at the time, it's, it's Upwork now, but at the time it used to be Elance. Found myself a couple of clients and I thought I'd, I'd done all right, you know. Um, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm making a little bit of money. It was nothing, to, you know, nothing to get excited about. And I was like, okay, I think I can do better. I'm always one for pushing myself, right? I'm, I've never been the type of person that just, you know, okay with doing okay. I always wanted to be the best at whatever I do, right? So I go and find this uh, mentor and I actually found him on the, on the Worry Forum called Paul Hancockson. He was like an amazing underground A-lister, um, amazing copywriter. And he mentored me one-on-one -on -one for an entire year. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's how I got into that world. And like within 18 months of me sort of starting this whole, you know, kind of venture, I was able to leave, uh, took my two children with me and the rest is history kind of thing. It all kicked off. Oh, from my God. Yeah. So, yeah. Would you say that when you started this whole journey, of course, you have had some skills, writing skills. Yes. Before, yes. Right? So did you know that where are you trying to lead yourself? 
you know, that's the funny thing, right? So some people have a very definite plan that mm. this is what I want to achieve. And in my head, I had no plan. I only had one plan. I need to leave. That's it. Right. But outside of that, I didn't have an actual plan. There was no growth plan in place. There was no strategic plan um, of action. There was no sort of here's the vision. Here's the goal. Here are the milestones. You know, these are the tasks that I need to do to achieve that goal. None of that. Like literally it was all very haphazard and so while like the first you know yeah I did really well and you know but then when I moved out and I was on my own and I went through like this dry spell where I had literally no clients because at that time I hadn't quite figured out how to do that bit yet like I really struggled and I was like oh my god like what is going on like I don't I don't get what's going on you know I was doing so yeah. well and I'm really struggling and everything and yeah so it's been a bit of a roller coaster actually so I've had you know good months I've had bad months and I've had some really bad months um mm-hmm. like any entrepreneur right and I didn't know it at the time my sister's the one that said to me she said you know what you are Arafa and I said what's that she went you're an entrepreneur you know I, and I was like huh I didn't even see myself I had a freelancer's mindset Right? Mm. which is really important because like I think look, the difference between an entrepreneur and a freelancer is a freelancer is always in uh, like their destiny is almost tied to their clients right whereas mm. entrepreneurs they make their own destiny right mm. um they, they're the ones that they they are like very conscious creators of where they want to go next and they engineer the next steps right and they take wow. the risks that they need to take but like with the freelancer the mindset is oh I just have to go find myself some clients who has to pay me yeah right? if they don't pay me then you know oh I have to go find clients again it's a it's a it's a very different mindset you know exactly so <clears throat> before Okay, how how long did it take you to make your first? I think you said um, 18, 18 months, right? To, to make months. your first 10 pay? Uh, no, 18 months for me to be able to leave. leave. Uh, yeah, to, to, to be able to leave. And then... Um, oh god it took me years to hit my first ever 10k like first ever project that paid me 10k yeah many many years I got yeah. like I, I I don't even know like you know it, it, for some people they hit that magic six figures quite quickly right yeah. I do it in a couple of years nope did not happen like that for me at all um I did not hit my first six figures until just a few years ago hmm which okay. is like really insane. Like, you know, I, like I, I'm, I'm one of these people, I make other people a lot of money. My yeah. son said to me once, he goes, mommy, you're always making all these people a lot of money. Why don't you make yourself some money? And I was like, <laughs> you know, like really embarrassing kind of thing. But it, it was true. I was like, a lot of it is down to your mindset, right? So, you know, being able to charge your worth and actually get it, that's, that was so hard. And every time I would put my pricing on, I would get so scared. And there'd be like this part of me, like really frightened that what if nobody pays? And as I learned very quickly that actually people will pay as long as you got the right avatar, as long as you got the right, right ideal client, right? So mm-hmm. now most of my clients at this moment in time, they are, um, you know, companies that are doing uh, seven eight figures you know and I've got celebrity influencers very notable thought leaders and you know extremely well-known industry experts who are you know who are part of my client list wow so there's something that really concerns like comes to my mind came to my mind when you talked about it yeah okay you started you didn't have any plan right and then you got a coach and then you hit your first 10k after years. But right now you're you're a nine-figure copywriter. Yes. And you're helping people to make to become six six figure, um, to make a lot of money, right? So would you say that you would be able to hit your first 10k or make more money if you would hire a coach? sooner oh 100 you would have oh if you would have yes. if you would have a plan specific plan yeah yeah totally i mean like my i have a coach at the moment um he's absolutely amazing um kevin is called and he's been coaching me for eight years now mm. i'm not kidding like the amount that he has pushed i had my coaching call with him this morning actually just before mm. we we had this podcast right and the amount that he pushes me and the amount that he really gets me out of my own way 
you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the great thing about coaching, and this is this is why I love it. I, I used to be one of these people, I, was, I didn't really understand it until I started doing it. Because what, what your coach will do is a great coach is going to help you get past your own self. You know, the only thing that stops you from getting to where you want to be is only yourself. You know, like you think about it, right? Most people know intuitively, they know they if they have a plan and they know what they need to do, why do they not get it done? Because they themselves get in the way, right? And your coach is what is going to help get you out of the way. Do you see what I mean? That is right? true. And I've had, I've had many coaches, honestly, Hazel, I have had at any one point in time, I've yeah. literally had, especially over, I'd say probably over the last three or four years, at any one time, I've had three coaches on the go. At any one time. Okay. For different things. Make a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So so right now I wanna I wanna connect this to the mindset in the yeah. psychology of a high performer. This is our topic. Yeah. So what is the importance of studying, working on mindset? My God. For you? Everything. I think it's the number one thing that is going to enable you to succeed is going to be your mindset. Right? Mm-hmm. Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. I can't remember who said that, but someone really famous said that. And like, it wasn't until I started reading, um, you know, books on mindset that I actually realized, hang on a minute, like this is literally everything. Like your approach to life is going to determine whether you win or lose right? It's going to determine how you show up. It's going to determine your confidence. It's going to determine what risks you take, right? It's going to determine how much you are willing to push yourself, right? That's all determined by mindset and how you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. I do feel that it's important that you know what your big why is. Like for me, my big why is my children. You know, I do everything like, and I always look at my children and they're all like, they're grown up. My oldest is like 19, right? And my youngest is is 13, is about to turn 14. And I just like look at my children and I just think, you know what, everything I do, it's for them. But having the big why is what is going to get you through. Like, you know, every business I don't care how good you are in business you can ask like I bet even if you had this conversation with Richard Brunson he'd probably say exactly the same thing they've had years where it's been really good they've had years where it's not been so great and they've had down and outright disasters right and that is true in every entrepreneurial journey you are going to have months where it's going to be fantastic you're going to have months where it's not going to be so great COVID hit I lost five clients overnight I was like really panicking like what am I going to do but Like, here's the thing, the mindset helps you to build that resilience and that strength. So when you're like down on your knees, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off off, and you keep going. That's what that gives gives you the ability to do, right? Mm -hmm. It also helps you to be mentally tough because sometimes you're going to get thrown into situations like, like, let's say you have a personal issue going on with your family Mm -hmm. and it's emotionally, it's just so draining and exhausting. The last thing you want to do is, you know, start doing business in your family. All right. right? Exactly. And so having that mental strength is extraordinarily important. And again, that's all to do with your mindset, but also like keeping your body really fit and healthy as well. You know, mm-hmm. like yesterday, um, before I even started, uh, you know, my, my, my day in the morning, I, I did like a 70 minute walk in the morning, you know, um, and, and, and for me, it's really important, like keeping healthy and trying your best to push yourself. Like, I feel like they go hand in hand because, you know, when your body is strong, then your mind is strong, Mm -hmm. right? And if your body is weak, the mind will follow, right? I actually read that in um, uh, a really fantastic book called uh, Mental Fitness by Aunt Middleton. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, when I read it and I was like, oh my God, like he's thought it's so true. It's so true, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to strengthen both your body and your mind if you're going to succeed, right? Because otherwise, you know, if you're, if your body is weak and your mind is strong, you don't, you're not going to have the health or the energy to be able to carry out your dreams, to be able to do what you want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And if your body is strong, but your mind is weak, then you'll never have the courage to take those decisions and to take those. actions. So either way, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Right. So you have to put the two together to create like, you know, the best version of you, if that makes sense. True. They say 80% of the success of anything 
yeah relationship in her life like business or whatever is mindset only 20 percent relies on strategy yeah copywriter as a nine-figure copywriter how much you agree with this oh 100 percent 110 percent right this is why we have people who they create these grand plans right yeah. and several years later they've not achieved even like a fraction of those plans right and yeah. then you ask them like what the heck happened and all of a sudden all these excuses start coming out right i, cu- I couldn't do it because of this is i couldn't do it because of this. no you couldn't do it because you didn't prioritize it you couldn't do it because you were getting in your own way Right? Mm-hmm. You couldn't do it because something came up and you didn't have the resilience to be able to go over it. Right. Whereas a person who knows what to do and is consistent, like this is so important as well, because I feel like with mindset, the consistency it, that goes hand in hand, you know. Yeah. So you have to be consistent at working on your dreams. Like if you're if you're not prepared to do that, then Unfortunately, you're never going to be able to hit those levels of uh, achievement that you want to achieve. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll never hit those goals that you want to, or it's going to take you 10 times longer probably than anyone else to be able to achieve those goals. True. Um, something that I want to know is how much you, okay, let me ask it this way. So many entrepreneurs tell me that, hey, I have a coach, for example. Yeah. Okay, I have a coach and when I ask them, for example, who's your coach and what type of coach you mean you have, they say, oh, I have a business coach who shows me what to do. Yeah. And then after a year or two, because I've seen people like this in the past and now they are in the same place, I am like way far from them. And they see that, okay, how are you now? Where are you now? And say, oh, I'm making two, three K. And I'm like, yeah. okay. What happened? Yeah. And they tell me, hey, I have a coach who tells me all the strategies, but I don't know how, how, why the, it doesn't mm-hmm. work. Yeah. So this proves that 80% of the success relies on mindset. Only 20% yes. relies on strategy. Even if yes. you have all the strategies in front of you and apply them. But if you, if your mindset is somewhere else, if your mind, if you don't work on your mindset, if you have so many limiting beliefs that's yeah. stopping you from applying all this, for, stopping you from moving forward, yeah. then you have nothing. You have only 20%. The 80% is the biggest part. Yeah, exactly. Okay. exactly. So how much, how much would you say like the importance, the importance, what is the importance of hiring a mindset coach, a coach that helps you and I'll, NLP or a practitioner or um, a mindset or high performance coach so that you mean th- they will help you to go yeah. faster. Okay. So just to put things into perspective, yeah, um, I've hired all of those coaches, mm-hmm. right? Because all of them have their value, right? And all of them- you hired have- all of them. Yeah. I've, ha- I've hired all of them in the past. So last year, for example, I had a high performance coach, you know, and I had my uh, usual coach, my, you know, he's a business coach. He's, 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 he's got an amazing background with NLP, mm-hmm. you know, and it makes a massive difference. For example, with my high performance coach, I was able to do things like complete my book, right? That was, for me, it was like a really big one. I needed to get that book complete. He coached me on mindset. He coached me on time management. He coached me on my energy levels. He coached me on every little thing that I can think of that I needed to have in place. I was very sick last year, Mm. right? And um, I actually had an injury in my back and I ruptured two discs. And for, for nine months, I was unable to walk properly. And many times I would sit down at my desk to work and my, my, my kids would see me crying and I'm not the type of person I'm, you know, I, I'm an ex kickboxer, right? I'm pretty, I like to think of myself as being pretty tough, right? And not a lot of things will make me cry. Like, you know, in terms of like pain and stuff, I, I feel like I have a high pain threshold and they would often see me crying and they'd be like, mom, what's wrong? And I'm like, you know, I'm in so much pain. I can't even sit properly, you know? And that was very hard. And so mentally, 
I felt like I had to, you know, like when you were saying you're digging really deep, yeah. I felt like I was literally scraping the bottle of, <laughs> bottom of the barrel. And I was like deep literally in digging heart. deep in the ocean for every, like trying to muster every ounce of strength that I could um, to not break down while I'm sat there. Like sometimes I would be in meetings and I would be in so much like pain and like trying to hide that, like with a smile on my face, right? Trying to conduct a meeting and trying my very best not to cry because the pain was just horrendous. You know, like mm -hmm. I think if there was like 10 levels of pain, mine was like a level 15. It was just off the charts, right? Um, and so for me, like the mindset element and one of the things that my coach said to me was, Arfa, like you have to start moving because I know it hurts to move, but you know what? the less you move, the more it's going to hurt and the harder it's going to be for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, I have a park right on the end of my street. Mm -hmm. And so I could not even walk to the end of the street without being hunched over and crying because the oh pain God. was just, it was so bad. So mm -hmm. he got me thinking in terms of milestones and he was like, right, your first goal is to get to the end of the street. Okay. And, and just come back home right? Your next goal is to get to the park gates and then get back home. Your next goal is to get to the first bench. And mm -hmm. then I started bench hopping and slowly but surely now, like um, just a, a few days ago, I walked five miles, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you'd asked me to do that last year, forget five miles. I don't even think I would have been able to walk 500 yards, you know, let alone, <laughs> let alone five miles, mm -hmm. right? And so this is, this is, where that resilience and that mindset comes in and I don't think that would have happened had my coach not pushed me to do that right same in my business when I have things that are not quite working the way that they are I have this amazing coach who is okay let's dissect what went wrong okay why did this not happen what did you do where's the responsibility he one thing I've learned throughout this entire process is the responsibility for, for taking action is always on me Right. So my coach can coach me as much as I, you know, as much as possible. But ultimately, I'm the one that has to do the work. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's the bit. Right. But when you know that you you've got a coach that you're getting on a call with every two weeks and you're going to be accountable to this person, you sure as hell are going to make sure that you're doing the work that you need to. So last year when you had that situation, yes. how many you were like seven or eight figure. Right. No, I I, I, don't, I was already at nine figures at that time. You were already a nine figure and yeah. you you hired a high performance coach. I Still did, yeah. you hired a high performance coach. Yeah. So I want to ask you some another thing. What was the difference between because right now you are a high um, you are a nine figure and you probably have went through all the stages that I'm going through right now. What is the difference between a mindset of a startup entrepreneur and someone who makes 10K and then 20K? Yeah. Is there any difference? Big difference? Oh, massive difference. I, I, I think, look, I'm, and I'm going to speak from a personal perspective because mm -hmm. obviously I can't speak for everyone. But when I was in that sort of hadn't got to my first 10K a month, mm -hmm. when I was not at that point, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of stress. There was a lot of anxiety. I think I was really thinking from a place of lack. And there was always like, when is my, where's my next client going to come from? Where's my next client going to come from? And there's always this fear around what would happen if that client didn't come in, right? But now I'm at that place now where I'm looking at that number and I'm thinking, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> Just sneeze and, and, and you can do it, right? Because... Yeah. It's not because of any other reason other than the fact that the mindset now is I have the skills, I have all the skills I need to basically create whatever I need to create. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my mindset now. If I don't have a client, I have the mindset and I have the skills that I know how to go get one. Wow. Does that make sense? Like it's yeah. so weird, right? And it's like you don't realize that until you know a lot later like you have to go through the process I feel I really do feel like it's a process some people I think are naturally they're born naturally confident I'm definitely not one of them for me that's something that I've always had to work on and so like when I hit my first 10k month I was like wow that's amazing but then I was like okay well when I, and when when I dissected it with my coach you know a lot of the questions that he was asking was like okay right 
So what's changed? Like he was asking me so many questions and very slowly I came to the realization, now hold on a second. I actually have all the skills I need to be able to do this all the time. Yeah. Wow. That's it. You know, and then, then everything changed. Right. And so like, does that mean that your money problems go away? No, it doesn't. Absolutely not. Because, you know, at the end of the day, look, we're in a bit of a volatile economy now, right? We are in a in a, a looming recession. People don't have as much, you know, free cash as, you know, what they would normally have, right? But the way that I look at it is, okay, there is still a lot of opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it, previously, I would have been thinking to myself, oh, my God, that's it, economy, it's all bad. It's, you know, I'm never going to, like everyone's struggling. Now, if I went in with that mindset and that attitude, I would be behaving like that. Subconsciously, I would be, you know, making all the, the actions and the behaviors that are sort of reminiscent of someone who knows that there is a problem. So mm -hmm. therefore, I'd ease off a little bit on everything, you know, and it's subconscious. You don't really notice that that's what you're doing. But with me, my mindset now is, okay, recessions and depressions are where the millionaires are made. That's how I look at it, right? So I'm, I've yeah. flipped it on its head now and I'm thinking, nope, there's plenty of people that are looking to make money in this economy. And so all I need to do is I just need to align myself in the right way with more of those types of people and I'm going to be totally fine. And also I, I have to be like, as a religious person as well, I believe ultimately that, you know, God is looking after me. Yeah. He's exactly. taking care of me. And yeah, and you know, I, I'm like, as long as I hurt no one, I harm no one, as long as I'm doing the right thing, um, you know, I know that, you know, he's gonna take care of me. So that yeah. that's my belief. So yeah. I, I remember last time we spoke, we you told me that the problems comes with 10k is different from the problems come with 1k oh, the, the the mindset problems that comes with for example the type of stress the type of mindset problem that comes with 10k is different from the types of problem that comes with for example 1k when yeah. you're a startup entrepreneur so you still need a a a coach but yeah. so many people like say oh yeah i'm i'm, I'm already at 10k i'm already at 20k so they yeah. feel like they don't need it but they yeah. still need it right yeah. so can you tell me a little bit like define a little bit about these type of mindset problems for example what are those things that comes with for example 10k 20k more on yeah. that so i think look i mean everyone wants to get to that magic six figures right yeah. And actually, once you get there, you realize, hang on a minute, well, that was actually a lot of hard work, right? The learning yeah. curve between the, the you know, going from like from zero all the way to six figures, the learning curve is huge. Mm -hmm. You have to have an extraordinary amount of personal growth to be able to hit that, right? So that means that your confidence has to be really like, you have to be super confident in what you deliver. You have to know that what you're delivering is fantastic and it's going to get the results, you know, for your clients, right? But like when you're at that 1K, let's say you're, you know, you're not even at that 1K a month or 1 to 2K a month kind of thing. When you're there, your mindset is, oh my God, I have bills to pay, I have this to pay, I have that to pay. You're constantly looking at where there is lack. And therefore, the decisions that you make come from that space. You're not going to want to invest in anything because you're like, I'm already short of money. Right? Mm. Whereas when you get to the 10K mark, you're like, okay, well, now I, I'm at this. Uh, how do I now get to the next level? Because, you know, making six figures is one thing, but keeping it is quite another. That is so true. A lot of people, and I know, and I'm going to just admit this right now, I've made that mistake as well. When I've had a lot of money coming in, I've been very silly with my money, right? You know, buying whatever I, I, I want. I've, I've made the same mistake. Yeah, same thing, right? Yeah. And actually my coach said to me once, he goes, Arafa, he goes, you know, your, your money is kind of doing this. It's like swings and roundabouts at the moment, right? And what is that caused by? Because it's impulse control. You have to develop a lot of control, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you can buy something doesn't mean that you should. Right. So the question that I always ask myself now is, do I really need this? Right. And it's because I know how hard it's been to create that money. Right. I know that I can make it, but like keeping it is a completely different problem. Right. And True. so every point that you make, like you get to that 10K. Right. Now the problem is, OK, I've got that 10K. But how do I, number one, maintain it? And number two, how do I make sure that I 
keep a hold of all the money that I've got, right? Or as much of it as I can, right? Mm -hmm. Then when you get to that 20K, right? When you hit those 20K months, right? Um, the next problem becomes, right, okay, well, now I need to look at growth, Okay. So for example, I just this year, I uh, just recently hired a PA, you know, I've got other copywriters now that work underneath me, right? That would never have happened, you know, at, even at the 10K market would never have happened. So the thinking evolves as you evolve, right? Wow. And so yeah, and your business is going to change. Like, um, actually, uh, so I, I, I'm on a, a mastermind program at Dan Bradbury's mastermind program. And one of the things that Dan always says is that if a business is not growing, it's because you yourself are not growing, right? I think that is so powerful. Wow. I'm like, wow. That, that is, is true. That, that is so true. true. Yeah. 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 And also wow. like you'll see it in your clients, right? So when I used to go for the clients who were paying me very little amounts of money, right? It was like stressing me out over the, 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 the payment terms. They would, they would like, you know, not make payments on times, all these silly issues. Right. And then like, I remember like we, we, um, when we closed our first ever, this is, um, uh, this is going back uh, now last year. Right. Um, we closed our, uh, we closed like a, a deal for like 53 K right. Client went and wired it in one go. And literally the message we got was like sent. Thanks. What? I'm like, what? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Right. So yeah. that, was a, that was a that was like a five month project. So it was, it was quite a lengthy project, right? But the mm -hmm. point is, is that the mindset was so radically different, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you're mm -hmm. dealing with um other entrepreneurs and business owners, you, they understand that when they pay you for something, they are actually investing in themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Really. So like the conversation that I had with that client was, right, we're going to turn your business, we're going to systemize your entire business. And he was already doing seven figures and the goal was to get him to eight, right? He made his, like within just a couple of months, right? He made his investment back, right? And now everything else is like what he's making on top of that. It's like month in, month out, he's got money coming in like clockwork, right? Mm -hmm. For him now, his business is growing really well. Right. And he, he will very easily hit that eight figure mark. No problem. Right. But here's the thing. You take someone who's at that lower end because they haven't been through that learning. They haven't been through that process. They haven't had the discipline of going through the stuff that you've been through. Right. Therefore, they don't understand. Oh, gosh, I have to. Oh, my God, I have to invest. Like even just like getting them to part with five hundred dollars, for example, wow. really yeah. hard work. Right. Um, that's, that's where the need comes. Yeah. That's where yeah. the need comes. Exactly. You realize all these things. Yeah, exactly. It was really funny. I'll tell you a really funny story, actually. So I had a, one of my clients, right, is doing multi eight figures. Um, this is a company that is doing 50 million a year. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, submitted a proposal. We got on a call. and There's about eight people on this call. And in front of everyone, he went, how um, much is the copy? And he went, good God, that's a lot of money. Like, really? You know, like, you know, and you know what I, I did? I did not even blink. In the past, I would have been making excuses or anything like that. Right. And instead, I just uh, turned around and said, yep. And I said, and um, uh, we will get you the results. You don't need to worry about a thing. And he paid it. No problem. Like he said it, but he paid it. Right. Mm -hmm. And same like I had a, a, <laughs> one, of, one of our clients. Right. He's like, that's a lot of money. Like, same thing. Right. That's a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah, but it's relative. Like, you're going to pay us once, yeah? As are you going to make that back with one client? Why are you worried? Like, literally, yeah. you know, why are you worried, right? Whereas wow. in the past, it would have been, oh, because of this, because of this, because of this. No, now I turn it around on the client. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is amazing. This is amazing. So thank you so much for sharing all this with me about psychology of the high performer, mindset of high performer. I just want to go to this part, which you you love more. You yeah. are so much more in it, which is the psychology of fire. Yes. What would you say is the psychology of fire? What's your definition for psychology of fire? It's it's all about the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions that lead up to that sale, right? Because people buy an emotion and they justify it with logic, 
right? And there's been so many tests that have been done, like, you know, scientists have done all sorts of researchers have done all sorts of tests on this. And they found that when a person is making a buying decision, the part of the brain that lights up predominantly, like literally like a Christmas tree, is the part of the brain that controls your emotions, right? Um, the part of the brain that controls your logic, which is like the front part of the brain, there is definitely some, you know, it lights up a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the emotional part, right? Mm-hmm. And how you've got to think about, you know, everything is... It's to do with how you feel, right? Think about it from from the perspective of let's say, let's take the uh, example of a car. Nobody needs a Ferrari. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there, yeah. yeah? And I'm not no judgment here, guys. You know, no judgment, right? Nobody needs a Ferrari. Nobody needs a really expensive car. You just don't, right? But yeah. people buy it because of status. They buy it because it makes them feel successful. It makes them feel really wealthy. It makes them feel like they've really achieved something, right? True. People look at them in a completely different way. You're driving a nice car, people automatically have a little bit more respect for you. You know, this is a person who's made it. This is a person who's successful, right? But I, and and that so that's a very very intrinsic need for mm. what its status right? That's the thing that ultimately people are buying when they're buying, you know, status and wealth and things like that and prestige. That's what they're buying when they're buying a really, really fancy car, right? Because you only need something to get you from A to B, right? You don't actually need something um, that is so expensive to do exactly the same thing. That is true. So interesting. Yeah. So what would you say is the importance of studying psychology of buyer for a let's say a startup entrepreneur, for an entrepreneur who starts working, um, selling a program or doing something, like what would you say is the importance of this? Well, put it this way, you can't sell your programs without understanding that, full stop, right? Because for a, for a buyer, I want you to think about it, like switch heads and put your put your put your self in the shoes of a buyer right the truth of the matter is right when you buy something all you care about is me myself and I what's in it for me that's it right and so for a person who's buying into let's say they buy a program from like let's say you're a coach or you're a consultant or you're a therapist and someone's buying something from you what they're actually buying is they're buying a transformation for themselves right but if you don't know how to articulate that transformation. If you don't know what problem you're solving for your ideal client, how on earth are you going to sell it to them? It's going to be very, very difficult to sell them based on features alone, right? If you look at Steve Jobs, right? I mean, he's he's passed away now, right? But this is like one of the best stories that I can use to illustrate this example. Um, Back in the day, this was before, you know, you know, he started Apple, right? He was selling a computer called Lisa. It was a $10,000 uh, uh, computer, like a supercomputer kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. He took out a nine-page ad in a national paper. You can imagine how expensive that must have been, right? And mm-hmm. he spent nine pages describing every feature inside of that computer, right? Mm-hmm. And you know what? The, co- the campaign completely bombed. Even com- die hard like computer like fanatics they didn't understand what that what the hell is this computer what does it what is it actually going to do for me they, they didn't understand it they didn't get it right and so nobody bought this thing and he got thrown off the, he got fired and he got thrown off the project right then what he did was he he um got involved with the uh, disney pixar right and he learned the art of storytelling right so years later when he gets on stage and now you know he's got the ipod instead of saying oh, it's like eight gigabytes and it's this many RAM and it's like yeah. this and this. He gets on stage and he says, it's a thousand songs in your pocket, right? Which exactly. Was, I, I, yeah. I saw that. I saw yeah. that. It was so amazing. And like, this is one of the reasons why Apple is one of the top um, you know, performing companies of all time, right? It's right up there with the likes of Google and Meta and, and whatnot, mm-hmm. right? Um, sure. The reason being because now they've really understood what their customer wants. They really understand how to talk to the customer in a way that the customer can emotionally connect with, right? And that's the thing. If you're if you're describing your, your products and your services or your programs in a way that's cold, clinical, or just focused on the features, which basically describe what something is rather than how it's going to transform or change their life then do you know what you're not going to sell very much this is where they really get really um uh 
uh, really get stressed out, right? This is mm-hmm. where a lot of startup entrepreneurs, unfortunately, it's one of the biggest roadblocks they hit in their marketing. So they'll they'll try things, they'll start doing Facebook ads and they'll start this and they'll try that, but they can't seem to get it to work. And then they are like, this doesn't work, it's rubbish, and then they give up, right? But actually, as soon as you understand who that ideal client is, who is the ideal customer, and you understand, you know, what is driving them, what are their fears, what are their frustrations, what are their dreams, what are their desires, what are their deepest, darkest insecurities, what are the problems and the pain points that they need resolving, once you understand all of these elements, and you're able to speak to them in that way, well, boom, your business is going to take off. Exactly. That's what I was what I was asking you next um, about the purchase decision process because it's a yeah. process, right? Yeah, you need to understand the desire, because like it's a desire, recognition, desire, formulation, and you know, then uh, fulfillment. Then yeah, like these three things, right? This yeah. I think these three things. So I was like, could you please tell me, tell us a little bit about this process? I mean, look, how you got to view the process is very simple, right? Your your client has or your ideal client has a problem that mm-hmm. needs solving, right? And that problem is causing them all sorts of issues. And I want you to think like, let's say a person needs to lose weight, right? The obvious prob- problem is they need to lose weight, okay? But how is that impacting their day-to-day life? That's the question that I would be asking, right? So for example, a person who's struggling um, with their weight, they lack confidence. They don't want to go meet that special person. You know, they don't like the way that they look. They're always hiding in the corner. They get passed up for opportunities simply because they don't want to show up, right? That's how their weight is impacting them negatively, right? So now imagine you come along with the product that actually says to them, hey, listen, you know, you're struggling with blah, blah, blah. You're struggling with low confidence, low self-esteem. If you want to feel good in your own skin, right? If you want to do all of these things, right? Then I have the perfect product for you. This program is going to help you to, you know, do this, do that. Like, you know, and you go beyond that. And this is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Go beyond the thing that is that they want, right? Like literally future pace. One of the things that I do when I'm I'm writing copy, um, you know, uh, uh, especially like these really long sales pages that you see, right? We do something called future pacing is where we are literally projecting the 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 reader right into the future and we show them what life is going to look like once they've solved the problem right and we paint a picture of how amazing their life is going to be once they've actually solved the problem right so this person is going to meet the person of their dreams they're going to be able to wear whatever they want they're going to be able to you know feel super confident in their own skin they're going to be able to you know start taking part in um you know let's say uh, activities like let's say i don't know rock climbing or whatever stuff that they might never have even considered before right if it's an older person they've got children maybe the problem has always been that they can't play with their kids because they get out of breath and you know they're so unhealthy they can't run around after their children right and now they can get involved with their kids right so it's always figuring out what's important to that client and then taking them along the journey with your words the things that you say to them right and helping them to understand that actually all these things are available and accessible to me once i purchase this product Wow. That's, so, how, that's how it works, you know. So, of course, through storytelling. Storytelling, when- exactly. And it, like, look, stories are extraordinarily powerful because they bypass the, you know, they bypass the buying signals in the brain, right? Yeah. And we're hardwired to, to respond to stories, right? You it kind of makes, like, makes you go through the process without yeah. you really going through the process. And you don't even realize you're doing it because you think yeah. you're reading a story. Right. And so that's extraordinarily powerful because like a great story, it's if it emotionally connects with the person who's reading, they will see themselves in your story. True. And they'll be like, wow, that's amazing. Oh, I could do that too. You know, mm-hmm. I did this post like ages ago on my on my Facebook um uh wall. I, I wrote this story about my background and I had so many people sending me private messages saying, Oh my god, your story was so inspirational. I want to be a copywriter too, and, and things like that, you know. So it's about really getting a person, taking a person on a journey from where they're currently at, which is in some sort of a problem, some sort of a pain or some sort of unmet need, right? If that's a desire, whatever it is that they're looking, um, that they want, right? Or that that problem that needs solving. And then showing them over a course of time what that is going to look like, how their life is going to change and what their life is going to look like on the end. That's ultimately what that buyer's journey is all about, 
you know, and the person who, who, who buys from you the ones and they get a really fantastic experience, you know, part of your marketing message really has to be about ascending them, right? You do a really great job. You're going to have a customer for life. You're going to have a client for life, you know, or you're going to have a client that goes and raves about you to other people. Wow. This is, this is amazing because, um, I, Every time I tell a story, every time I write a story about my background, what I'm going through, yeah, and of so many people engage with it and they they feel it, yeah. And from this thing, I want to ask this question: yeah. Can we really, can we really turn these people who really engage with us yeah. to a client? Oh yeah, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent. I know I do it all the time. So this means that they relate to this. Yes. Totally. Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll tell you a little, little uh, thing actually. So yeah. one of my clients, right. So one of my clients um, came to me and he said, you know what, I'm working really hard on my emails. He had a, he had a, two gyms actually. And they were spending a lot of money on Facebook ads. Right. And giving away like a meal plan on the, on, on the front end. And essentially what they were, what the problem was is that they were, they were pulling people in. There were people who were downloading this meal plan And their goal was to try and get these people going through these emails and essentially booking a call with their team, getting on those consults and then pulling them into a program, right? That's what they wanted them to do. It was like a weight loss program. And so he he had been working really hard on these emails and he goes, I I just can't seem to get them to convert. So anyway, I had a, the second I looked at these emails, I went, I knew immediately what the problem was. I said, I know what the problem is. He said, what's that? And I said, there's no emotion in any of these. I said, they're so cold and clinical. I can't relate to anything that you're saying. Information is good, but like psychologically, I'm just not connecting with any of it. Right. I went, okay, can you, can you please like work on these then? And then, you know, can, can we get something in? Now he had around three to four people booking a consultation every month. That's about one a week, right? You can't run a business with one sales call a week. That's not how business works, right? It's a numbers game, right? And so I took that same sequence of emails, right? And all I did was infuse the emotion into them, right? First week, 18 calls booked. I ended up having a record breaking quarter because of those emails. And then he went and put me on a retainer. He was like, right, I need to get you on a retainer. Right. Um, and the reason why he did that is simply because he he recognized and he understood that actually, hold on, what I've been doing, which is I've been putting out this amazing information, but emotionally it's not resonating with my ideal client. Right. As soon as you create that resonance, as soon as you can create that relevancy and that emotional connection, People get that. Once they have that emotional buy-in, they are so much more likely to buy from you. True. That is so true. Amazing. Um, How can we, what can we do as an entrepreneur or let's say marketers, what can they do so that we can influence, we can affect this process? So I would say there's... And what are your suggestions? Yeah. so So I will give you a couple of suggestions. I think number one, look, if you are not in the position to hire a copywriter, okay, you should at least understand and know the fundamentals of psychology yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's something. So copywriting as like, you got to understand human behavior. You got to, I mean, I'm a shameless plug for my book now, right? But I would say grab my book, right? So Mindhack Marketing, it's available on Amazon, right? Um, And here's the thing, that is going to give you a very thorough understanding of what the psychology of your buyer is, right? What's the psychology of your market? That's going to help you to understand that. And you can start adding that into all of your, everything that you're putting out there, all of your messaging. It doesn't matter whether it's an email, whether it's a webinar, whether it's a Facebook live that you're doing, a post that you're doing on social. As long as you have those elements in there, you will start creating engagement and you will start getting calls booked and you will start selling, right? Now, obviously it is a skill and it does take a while to develop. But here's the thing. Everybody understands story and everyone understands emotion, right? This is two fundamentals people pretty much understand. You don't need to be a world-class copywriter. You just have to be good at telling stories. And the best advice that I can give you is tell the story as if you were speaking to your best friend, right? Because when you tell a story, the way that you tell a story to your best friend 
you're going to talk about the feelings. You're going to talk about your fears. You're going to talk about everything, totally. right? You're not going you to have no you limit. You just say it, right? Yeah, you just say it, right? Wow. And you tell the story and you share how you were thinking, how you were feeling, what the actions are, what the behavior was. All of that comes out naturally when you're speaking to your best friend. But somehow I've seen like they put it on paper and all of a sudden they remove all of the emotion. Now, why did you do that for? Now, that's the thing that's going to make your story work, right? So yeah. that's the thing that I always um, uh, tell people, right? But if you're in a position that you can hire a really great copywriter, right, or you can learn the skill yourself and do it for yourself. I mean, I personally think that your time should be spent in your zone of genius, that's where you should spend your time, right? So if you're really great at coaching, stick to the coaching. You shouldn't be writing the copy, right? So your own personal post that you put on social, yeah, I do think that you should put that out there yourself because that's your voice, that's your tone of voice, right? But like things like campaigns, get an actual copywriter to create them for you, right? Do your due diligence as well. There's a lot of bad copywriters out there. I've seen them myself. I know I've hired some and yeah, really awful. Um, you got to go for someone who, number one, understands strategy and number two, has proven results, right? That's yeah. what you've got to go with. Don't just look at someone's copy and think, oh yeah, that, that reads really well. It's really nice. No, they've got to have proof that it converts right they've got to be able to tell you yeah i've been able to get these results for my clients right and mm -hmm. that's what really makes that difference so th those are the kind of like the big ones that i would say um is definitely something to consider wow i loved it thank you so much um so we're getting to the end of the podcast and i'm trying to ask you some more questions i mean some other questions if you don't mind me ask you no go for it yeah like through like throughout these 12 during these 12 years of being yeah. an entrepreneur yeah a business owner what has been what have been the the best advice you have someone gave you okay best advice would definitely be i know it's not what anyone's going to expect here right but the best advice that i would give you is you really got to understand your finances inside out you understand your money that I'm telling you is so important, right? Because if you can make the money, right, and you're spending it and you're not tracking it, you're not understanding cash flow, you're not understanding the movement of money in and out of your accounts, that's a massive, massive danger right there, right? So as a business owner, one of the things that you should have in place is a cash flow, right? I update mine every two weeks. I know three months out exactly how much money is going to be in my account and how much is not. Right. And then I can make decisions like, oh, OK, I can see for this particular month, right? This uh, in three months time, I'm not going to have that much cash in the bank. OK, what actions do I need to take right now to make sure I'm improving my cash flow and I'm, I'm getting more opportunities? Right. And so it's it because that is going to then guide all of your thinking. Does that make sense? Right. It's going to guide your plans. It's going to guide everything that you do. Right. Um, the other thing is, is do not operate out without a strategic plan of action right like that i feel is stupid because you are then operating blind if you don't know what the target is how the heck are you going to hit it right and so it's not good enough just saying because i you know and, and i'm guilty of this when i when i first started out i would say things like yeah i'm gonna make this much money a year but actually there was no plan in place of how i was going to make that money right it was a nice airy fairy number but you know that saying right if you fail to plan you plan to fail Wow. So it was no accident then that I never hit those numbers. When I used to say, I'm going to make this much money, I never hit them because I didn't have a plan in place for them. And then as soon as I started the strategic planning process, now it becomes easy to hit those numbers, right? Mm -hmm. And even when you don't hit those numbers, you understand why, like you've got a process in place to dissect why that didn't happen, right? And then you make your adjustments, you course correct, you get back on uh, track and you keep going, right? Other thing is I work in 90 day sprints, right? And I highly recommend everyone else does as well. So quarter to quarter, like we're coming at the end of Q Q4 now, right? I will have, I have a plan of uh, action in place for Q4. I've pretty much hit most of, uh, I'm about 70% there on hitting my targets now, right? And then for Q1, there'll be, at the end of that, there'll be a review. And then Q1, there'll be a brand new plan of action just for Q1. So I have a yearly goal, but then what I do with that yearly goal is I break that down 
and I break that up into quarters and then I figure out, okay, how many clients do I need? What do I actually have to sell and what are the activities that I need to do in order to hit those goals? And that's literally how I work. And then the final piece of advice is get yourself a coach. Seriously, get yourself a good coach. You know, a good coach or a good mentor, it's not a cost to your business. It's an investment. That's how you got to look at it, right? A lot it, of people have it excuse like, oh, I don't have the money to invest. Oh, nonsense. People are not, nonsense, you, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's not about you give a money. You're yeah. giving a money to someone. You are actually putting a money in, in your business. Yes. Whoa. Well, yeah. that's, not, that's not how they look at it. They think, oh, that you are giving money to someone and they yeah. don't think that it's not about that. Yeah, I would okay. say so. so what, what, what has been the best advice you have ever been given, like someone gave you? Right. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Um, I think the best advice that I've ever been given is to really, like, check myself and really look at, like, what's my responsibility and everything. So something didn't work out. Rather than looking externally, it's looking mm -hmm. within. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually, my, co my coach gave me that. Right. Like asking the hard questions. That's so important because mm -hmm. without that, the, there isn't really any growth without asking those hard questions. You know, that's not like how can you possibly grow as a person if you don't know what you're doing wrong? There's a saying I heard once that nothing goes away until it teaches you what you need to know. Right. Mm -hmm. And so until that actually until you've actually mastered that. Right. And you understand, then you can then start moving forward. Otherwise, guess what? You keep making the same mistakes again and again and again. Wow. So what has been the worst advice? <laughs> worst <laughs> advice. Oh, uh, do everything yourself. That's been that the save yourself the money and do everything wow. yourself. That's wow. not the worst advice anyone wow. ever gave me. Like seriously. Wow, that is so yeah. true. That yeah. do it yourself. Yeah, dude. People, people don't understand this uh, this aspect, right? It's like if you're—I'm just giving an example now, right? If your hourly rate, just as an example, is five hundred dollars an hour, just as an example, right? And you spend an hour doing admin in your business, you didn't save yourself any money. It's a ten-dollar task. You can outsource admin for ten, fifteen dollars, right? But you cost your business five hundred dollars. That's what you did. So it's the, it's the mindset. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Right. You spend 10 hours a week doing admin. You just cost your business $5,000 because actually your time should have been better spent. Your time should have been spent in revenue generating activities or, or delivery. Wow. Do you see what I mean? This is what causes yeah. the, the stress and the burnout in a lot of, in a lot of clients, right? Um, so people will be like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really struggling with this. And I'm like, well, why the heck are you doing it all on your own anyway? It's not like you don't have the money. Go and do it. Put it this way, right? So when I when I first when I hired um, Paul as my coach, I did not have the money to pay him. I borrowed the, the first money. coach. You mean? Yeah, my first ever coach, right? I did not have the money to pay him, and I borrowed the money from my sister in law. Okay, and within um, three four months, I, I was able to pay her back. Right, but the point is, had I not done that, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like that decision to hire him as my mentor was the hands down the best decision I ever made in my entire life. I was able to walk out, you know, on on uh, walk out of my marriage. I was able to start my life again. Right, I moved to a brand new city. You know, every single thing slowly but surely. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but everything slowly but surely completely changed. And now I get hired by some of the best names in the business um, will hire me to, to work with them. I work with celebrity experts wow. and influencers, like people who are extremely well-known, like really well-known thought leaders. They wow. hire me to do their marketing for them. Right. And I wouldn't be here where I am now had I not done that initial investment, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you so much for everything you have okay. provided. Like today had been one of the best days of my life because I've oh. learned a lot from you. Like I was listening to every single 
word. Yeah. And like curiously, like I, I was like, oh my God, this is what I wanted to hear today. Uh, and it was a big, big session for me. Thank you oh, so much. I'm sure, I I'm, sure I'm sure it will be for all of uh, my audience, your audience. Yeah. And at the end, is there anything, any suggestion, any advice you would want to add to the podcast? I think the only thing that I would probably say is as an entrepreneur, you know, there's no such thing as failure. There is only lessons learned, right? And you have to get good at learning those lessons because if you don't, the only person that's really going to struggle is you. You know, you have to be willing to have the humility to accept where you're wrong. You have to have the humility to accept responsibility for where things have not worked out. You know, one of the questions that I once asked one of my students was, would you hire yourself? And Wow. Literally, the, 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 wow. The, 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 the like literally, it was like mind equals blown kind of thing. I had like a literally, uh, 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 I had to, uh, 24 students I asked this question to. Right. I said, OK, look, you know, you're not, you guys are at the end of your own journey now, you know, because I was, I was I was coaching them on this program. And I literally said to them, I said, the people who got the most out of this program, you know how much effort you put in. And the ones who didn't, you also know how much effort you put in. So the question I'm going to ask to you all is if you were would you hire yourself in your own business? Wow. Everyone was like, what the heck? <laughs> you know? That is the best, best. Yeah. Piece of advice, best piece of, I mean, best thing I've ever heard. Yeah, seriously. Since I started this business. Yes, if you say no, I would not hire myself. And you have to be brutally honest with yourself. That's something that you have to really go away and think about. Okay, well, did I show up and do the things that I wanted to? Did I commit to the things that I said that I would commit to? Did I do whatever it took, no matter what happened, right? And so when you put all those together, here's the thing. If you were to hire someone in your business to do a job and they behaved like you, would you be happy with them? Because we are the entrepreneurs and we are the owners of the business. We think we, because we are the boss, we can do whatever we want, right? Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't really absolve you of any responsibility, really, because you would not like if you know you've not been showing up the way that you should you should have showed up. If somebody else turned up and did that in your business, you'd be so angry with them. You'd probably fire them. Right. You might give them a chance. You might give them two chances. Right. You might give them the opportunity to 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 rectify their ways. But the truth of the matter is you would very likely you're going to fire them if they keep on like that. But yet this is how people approach their business. Right. And this is then they complain, oh, I'm not seeing the growth in my business. I'm not seeing that my business has steadily, alhamdulillah, it's steadily grown um, every single uh, year, year on year. Right. Um, it has grown. I mean, my profitability just from last year's is well over 60 percent. Right. In, mm-hmm. in improvement in in profitability from from the previous year. Right. And so mm-hmm. the profit is a very big thing. Right. Um, you know, and my revenue is like shot up as well. Right. So it's like well, okay, so are you doing all the things that you need to do? Like now I've got several people underneath me. I have a team now underneath me. I'm not Mm -hmm. on my own anymore, right? But it's, again, it's like doing the hard work. I'm very, very critical of myself. Trust me, no one's going to be more critical than I am. But that's because I have the humility to learn, right? And that's not something, if you'd asked me all those years ago, probably something that I would not have had. Mm -hmm. You know, now if I've screwed up somewhere, I will say, do you know what? I didn't sh- I didn't show up the way that I should have done you know I will say that now whereas before it would have been excuses now it's taking responsibility for that oh my god our father Sarah Iqbal <laughs> uh, the nine-figure copywriter thank you so 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 much Absolutely. Everything, pleasure. yeah everything loved it. to this podcast it has been my greatest pleasure to talk to you. Thank today. you for having me. Yeah, Thank it's you been so amazing. much. I hope I can have another chance to, so that we can have another one. Absolutely, anytime, anytime, Hazel. You know, I, you know, I would do that for you anytime. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, and have a good day. You Thank too. You. Take hope care. See you. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope you got benefit from this. Um, see you all on another episode. Bye bye.